you have not watched Yeah Mad Man, before you watch this video, go and watch it because I might spoil one or two things. It's just a five minutes video, so just go and watch it. Then you come back and watch this thing if you don't understand. Inugo, thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you so much. 25k views on Dear Mad Man. Promise me when I say this, I was aiming for something high, but I was not expecting something big this soon. Do you get? I know I would say, oh, I was aiming for at least 100k views, but I was like maybe in one year. And then it's like two weeks and I made that 25k views. So that means 100k in less than one year is even possible. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching Dear Madman. And I am making this video to explain some things. Now, this is the thing. I know a lot of people watched this video and they were confused. They were like, oh, I don't know. I'm not wrong. I don't understand this thing. And I totally understand you. Before I continue, let me put a disclaimer. I'm gonna need to English and Igbo in this thing. You understand? But I'm gonna put subtitles, sub subtitles, not subtitles. <laughs> so yes, and I plan not to do any much editing in this video. I don't want to cut and join and cut and join. So this is like a rough video, okay? Without edits, probably, maybe, hopefully. Okay, so now let's do this. Um, the thing is, I came here to explain some things about the Mad Man because first of all let me start with this when i made that move when i in fact first of all i will start in fact jesus there are so many first of all where should i start from okay now the thing is it is a very old story that i wrote so my name is spent on imaginations all over all my social media platforms and this is because i used to write stories i used to write poems i i literally used to write when before i started doing content creation do you get i writing was like my thing so i wrote dear madman in 2019 and i wrote it as a diary do you get so now it is ambiguous because it's like a diary do you get so that is one secondly the second first of all is that when i i i put out this film i knew that a lot of people were not going to understand Jiget. Now let me link it to my first first of all. Now I linked it to my I'm linking it this way because like okay, so I don't want people to really understand, and that is because it is a diary. So I wrote this script in a place of secrecy. So now I am here to now explain what was my own idea of thoughts when I wrote this because I mean it's out and people are confused, even though i never wanted to clarify it but i was like you know what this can actually be another youtube video just clear up the air anybody that watches this one fine if they don't watch it, it's fine so thank you guys so much for sharing this video for subscribing for dropping a comment you guys i swear i am so happy like i did not expect this i mean i wanted it shit after two minutes really nigga okay let me see if the camera is still good and then i might shoot it Anyways, I said that this video is not going to have so much edits, so yes, here I am. I am going to continue shooting, even though there is no light and my LED light is off. So I'm just going to try and edit it in a way that it would not be so obvious that there is not adequate lightning. Okay, I mean, it's my fault. I've been procrastinating. I've been wanting to do this video since, but I said let's do it now. And we've had light since, so yeah. It's not really in their past fault, is it? My fault, maybe. Anyways, back to what I was saying. So I did not want to clear the air. I did not want to clarify this before, but I'm actually flinging this wig. And I mean, this is my mother's wig, and yes, it is given. I feel like taking it back. Okay, Chidara, don't be distracted. Anyways, as I was saying. Um, yes, so that was actually a diary session for me. And now, since Papito and I never like talked about this in our Q&A session, I might just involve it here. So the thing is, let me just tell you how we shot this movie. So um, Papito and I, we like had to, we went out to like shoot the content and blah blah blah. And then we were just talking, and I was telling him like my pens and imagination story, how I started writing poems, how I started writing stories and then we had to like go down 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 my instagram page and then we were just going through some of the stories and when he saw this dear man he was like let's shoot this first of all i was like eh? shoot what like at first it was like this is kind of personal to me it's not really something i would want to shoot because i wrote it out of uh, i wrote it out 
of a place of secrecy. Do you get? I don't see like a diary you get. And then when I used to write stories, I don't have much followers. So even if I used to like write it and post it, I never expect the people that were following me to even understand or to even see the post. Like highest to get 20 likes. <laughs> so it was actually like a diary, but I was keeping it there so that I would save it. So um anyways, by diary I don't mean like the diary you know, like very very private. I mean like social media diary basically so it's not really private it is not private in the sense that a lot of people are seeing it but it is private to me that wrote it but i'm only making it private by hiding some things do you get so now um as i was saying i was talking with papito i was telling him oh this 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 is what um, I thought about when I was writing this story. And I was like, you know what, let's just shoot it, let's just shoot it how it is exactly in your script, in your story. And this happened because when we are reading other stories, the reaction, the reaction he actually got from this particular story was surprising. It was like, ooh, when the movie ended with, you know how it ended. I don't spoil it for those that have not watched it. So when the movie ended that way, he was like, ooh. We have to shoot this this was his exact reaction and i was like eh, i don't think he was like we have to shoot this and i was like who oh, are the madman and it was like him and i was like are you going to walk on the streets as a madman and i was like yes he's an actor so i was like okay do you know what fine let's just do it i mean i've always wanted to do short movies but i've been procrastinating do you get even content creators that you think are not procrastinating because of their consistency they actually procrastinate if you notice i've not even been posting back to back on my youtube because i wanted to come back with short movies with comic skits long form and all of that so i did not want to you know i tried on it i don't know i was just getting tired of doing my daily life vlogs because i was tired of like holding cameras in a youtube format since i was already used to holding it in an instagram format i don't even know if you get me anyways but yes i took a break from youtube i was posting but to me i was taking a break because i was not doing what i wanted to do so when he told me let's do this i was like okay in my words this is a breakthrough maybe i should just shoot this movie and stop being scared so yes we actually shot the movie and i am so happy it turned out well now let us get straight into the nitty bitty gritty of things yeah okay so first of all my full name is Ono Chidera. you guys probably already know i feel like i like to say my full name so that i mean it's my identity so it's not even necessary <laughs> anyway so yeah that is my name just for keeps not like it's you know important in what i'm saying so now the thing is let me now tell people what was in my head when i was thinking about this dear madman so that people that found this ambiguous will understand it way and if possible you can even go and watch it back you know so that you give me more views so that you now understand it after watching this thing i've explained do you get so now this is it um now okay do you know what let me tell you what happened to me because in the beginning of that movie, I wrote a loving memory of I believe. I'm sorry that I'm just going like this, I'm going like this. I'm so sorry. But I hope you guys understand. So, in there, at the beginning of that movie, but a loving memory of I believe. Now, I believe was, is, no, was a madman I knew growing up. I don't know him personally, Obiko. I do not know him personally. A second, please. A lot of things are trying to test my faith, but I'll continue this video. So I believe was the madman that I know, I knew growing up. Do you get? So um, I kind of, um, not personal, please, not on a personal basis, just from afar. I was a small girl then. I was like eight, seven or less. So I um, did not know him on a personal basis. And he used to like carry dirt, like... He was a madman, but he was still hustling. I don't know if people understand this thing. Like, he was mad. Everyone knew him, but he was mad. He was like our street madman, Jigit. So everyone knew he was mad, but he was hustling. So he used to carry like barrel and go house to house on that whole street. He actually lived behind the streets, you get. But he used to carry barrel and like walk on the whole street, like the main road side. I'm like, I believe. People call him, I believe, I believe. Even ourselves, he's like teasing. I believe, I believe, that kind of thing. 
and you just come carry there to go with i think 20 naira then to carry like a whole big you know extra bag of debt and i mean it was a big deal then this was like almost 16 years ago so um he would do all of that and i mean i felt like if he was really mad he wouldn't be hustling i mean i don't know i don't know that was just how i saw it then because i was like my people that i know they are just walking on the streets naked but then this one was clothed and he was carrying barrel but he was mad like everyone knew he was mad okay so um throughout my journey in school i realized that not everyone is actually mad some people are just psycho but they are not like mad 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 i mean the extreme madness you see on the streets are those ones that have now removed their clothes remove everything or that kind of thing but then some people are actually like in the transitioning phase or they are just probably stuck at being psycho maybe there's something wrong with them they could, they could be depressed they could be blah 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 and kind of learned parts of that in school so now the thing is anytime i am passing okay so i believe lived behind my street so anytime i was going to set um, China, where, primary school then i would pass his crib now he had like a little you know like kiosk size shop or house like just like a one room that he built with like you know how small small shops used to be so imagine it's at someone's house so just have that house and it was very scattered anytime i'm like because my primary school was just behind my street so anytime we are like walking to school we used to pass his house and i look at his house and his house is looking scattered it's looking dirty but at least he has a house do you get like he goes back to somewhere nice to, not nice but he goes back to somewhere to sleep and i always ask myself is this man really mad because growing up there's there was an idea of madness that i had there which i don't have now so um because of what i just said so i thought like every man person was supposed to be roaming around and all of that so fast forward to like 20 this was probably like 2010 2009 so fast forward to like 2019 i wrote that i believe story um after my primary school i went to abuja i was schooling in abuja my secondary school was in abuja so Anytime I'm coming back, it's mostly village, village, village. I hardly spent time in my house in town, so I did not say I believe so often anymore. So in 2019, then I was only secondary school. I was not spending more time at home, and I was still saying I believe. So um, um, fast forward to like 2018. I don't know when he died. Probably I don't even know if I wrote that thing after he died or something like that. But sure, he died. And then my mom said that he died. When I asked my mom, where is I believe? I have not been here in a few minutes. It's not like packing dead again. I'm not seeing him moving around. And I was like, yeah, he died some time ago. Um, they said that people were fighting with him and they kicked him in his balls. And from complications to complications, he died. And I was like, what? So now that is what inspired the story. So it's not like I had a personal or close relationship with I believe, but i feel like it's kind of inspired me and i was like so what if i actually knew this guy on a personal level i believe it was an old man like seven sixties fifties and above so obviously please i had no personal you know with him he gets like i portrayed in this movie but i actually imagined what if i had something personal with him what if there was i used to talk to him on a personal level would i have felt more bad if i held if I heard that he died, because when my mom told me that he died, I was like, okay. It's like touched me for like 10 seconds and then I just shaved it off. Because I mean he was not like a sane person, so I don't know why I was not touched. Then it's not made me wonder if this guy was sane. In fact, if I used to talk with him, would I feel any better? Would it touch him any better? Now, this is what motivated the story, dear madman. So fast forward to months later, I was still in my writing era. I picked up my phone. I was like, "Dear madman." No, I actually did not write "Dear madman." I feel like I don't even have a name. So it's like a diary. If you go down, down, down my page, you would see where like I wrote it. I wrote it like a diary. I wrote Wednesday something, something, something. There's this madman that surpassed my street. Blah blah blah. Today he changed clothes. So it was like inspiration, but it was not related to the madman. You know, in on a personal level so um now let us i've told you what made me write the story so now let us now get to what this my own story actually entails because it was ambiguous says i accept i wanted it to be that way now i wanted it to be that way because number one like i said it was like a diary session number two i actually love stories with sad endings and i love stories that leaves you worried 
I, I love watching movies and I love movies like that. So I actually want to do it. I'm not all about the happy ending, but don't get me wrong, I'm going to do more happy endings, please. I love it too. So I just wanted my first one to be special. I wanted it to be actually what would make people shake a little. You understand? I don't want the you know popular happy ending when they will now hug and they will give happy ever after. So I just wanted it to shake people a little bit, but I mean, after this, I'll drop both happy endings, sad endings, and because things, because I am actually a sucker for sad ending movies, so count me on that one. So now, the thing we will say, when we started this movie, at first I told myself, do you want to expatiate on this thing with the idea you had in your head when you were writing this story years ago? And I told myself, no, I'm going to write this in exactly how it was on my page. Do you get? I think I even removed some things. So it's like I'm just I'm going to act, we are going to act this thing exactly how it was on my page. So I called Papito, I called Iche Voodoo, we went scouting for location. Actually, Iche was the one that did a lot of the scouting in Oyeka. And he actually found something and I did not even know the location until the day of the shoot when he took us in. And then I was like, no, this location resonates perfectly with what I want. Because when I wrote the story, I was living like in Ababa. I grew up in Ababa, and there was a way that the house is here then. And then this one kind of resonated with it too, because I mean, we don't live in Ababa anymore. And I know that when Papito said we should shoot this movie, I was like, should we go back to my former house? I was like, no, because we left because of the renovation that was going on there. So everything must have changed daily to now. So it wouldn't be like the same vibe anymore. So I just couldn't go back there. Because I was like, I might go back there and beg the neighbors, something like that. But I was like, you know, let's just look for a, you know, an entirely new house. So we actually went to the man's house. The man like talked to us, kind of encouraged us and said oh he was proud of what we were doing. And I mean we did not pay him for the location, thankfully, but I mean I ha I had to like give an appreciation anyways at the end of like when we finished shooting. Now this thing took us like five hours to shoot, roughly five hours to shoot. I was so happy it did not take so much time because I thought it was going to take up to ten hours. But I mean the scenes were small, it was our first time, you know. I don't know, it was my first time, Papito is an actor, so it's not his first time, and he chased a videographer, so, but I mean, it was my first time actually doing something, and the fact that it was going on my own YouTube channel even made me more nervous, because I was like scared of the outcome, I was like, ah, will people insult this movie, will people do this, will people do that, but I was like, you know what, ignore everything and shoot here this movie, what I go, so now the thing is, now let me now go into this, because after this I'm done, so, um, now, there is a madman that used to pass these streets. You understand? Now, why I put an exact time is because where I used to live in Ababa, our mad people used to pass here. And what I realized is that they pass at a particular time. Maybe not exact time, minutes, seconds. But if it's 5 p.m., they are passing there at 5 p.m. Always. Or 4 p.m. or 3 p.m. Shada passing within that time range. Like, I know there was this mad woman I used to see on my streets. I mean, but I was more grown then. She used to pass that exact time. Like, no, not exact time, but that evening. Every evening, if you're, on your street, if you're outside your veranda, be whatever, every evening, she must pass. Like, if you're on your veranda within a period of time, that woman must pass. So I figured out that if I said he used to pass my street by 5.51 p.m. every day, it was not going to sound so ambiguous. Do you get so I was like, you know what, I'm going to carry on with it. So, um, yo, you guys, I actually put it 5.51 p.m. Now, the thing is, Papito was passing 5.51 p.m. every day, every day. When I started noticing him, I noticed it was every day. I used to come out of my veranda to look. If you notice, I had like shots from the veranda. I had shots from down, just to show that I was always looking at him. Now, this is the thing. He changed his clothes. You would ask yourself, why would he change his clothes? But still have the nylon on his right foot. So this was because the madman was not really mad. Like he said, he said, I'm not mad, I'm sad. So he was not really mad. So anytime he's passing the streets, he would kind of notice that someone is always there looking at him. I mean, this was four days in, because I know I showed Tuesday, I showed Wednesday, Thursday, then... No, I showed Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I mean, I showed Thursday, sorry, I showed... Sorry, I'm so sorry. I showed Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I did not show Sunday, Monday, then I showed... And I did not show Tuesday. That means he has been passing 
that same way every day. You understand? Every from Thursday to whenever Tuesday, Wednesday, I used to see him pass. Do you get? I feel like I'm losing sunlight. Anyways, I used to see him passing. Now, a day, one certain day, I came out and he changed his outfit. Now, what does this mean? That means he noticed, he's already noticing that there's a lady up there that is looking at him. So, I mean, he has to impress. It's not really like mad. But that is the thing, his cycle in the sense that he can change his clothes to impress the lady looking up there. But the nylon is still on his foot because he's not even doing it with his right senses. His own is just to impress. But I mean, so now to me, this kind of felt like sometimes you try to please people, but the truth is, who we are still remains who we are. So that is the moral lesson from this particular point. So let's continue. If you don't understand that, I'm sorry, but that is how I understand it. <laughs> so, anyways, me, Sha, as a lady that is just writing on her diary. Someone even commented that said, there is only one mad person there, and that is that girl. She's the mad woman. This should have been their mad man because why would you be waiting for a mad man to pass every day? And I understood that. So, so bad you were crucifying me. I understand. <laughs> but, anyways, um, I was watching him pass every day, and I felt like teenage fantasies. To me, he was handsome. You get? And I was like, oh my god, this guy is so handsome. So, me said, what I was even targeting is why is this guy mad and handsome? Like, why is a handsome guy mad? That was what made me take interest in coming out every day to see me. I mean, we have all been in that point of our life where we were inquisitive. So that was me being inquisitive. Like, I just felt like I wanted to talk to him. And now, what was in my mind is, oh, well, the first time I'm talking to this guy, I'm going to tell him he's handsome, shy, because I really want to tell him that. Like, that is even the main thing on my mind. I just want to tell him he's handsome. So that was why I said it that time. But before we get to that, let me continue. So I was um, always looking out and admiring someone that was passing. Then he now changes his clothes. And I'm like, oh my God, he changed clothes today. And I was just looking. And then the next day, he wasted time. So I was like, okay, I came out at 6, oh, 6 p.m. He was not there. I came out at 6 21, 6 18, blah, blah, blah. He was not there. Then. And I finally came out. That was when he now passed. Now that was the time he was wearing the blue shirt. That day both of us talked. So when he was passing, he now turned. Dig it. When he turned, he now looked at me. And when he looked at me, he now came to meet me. At first I was scared. I was like, oh my god, how did this guy now say? But obviously, he has been seeing me stand there and look at him. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go and sit down. If she wants to talk to me, let her come and talk to me. She's not going to talk to me, let me go. So he sits down, he gets his son, and he starts drawing a car. He's literally drawing a car with five heels. Now the thing is, I do not want to portray so much on this point. I just wanted to show the details, show the details, and just leave. Do you get Because I know that if I was going to watch it many years to come, I understand how I felt when I was writing the story. And I know that, okay, this is what was in my mind when i was writing this i don't really do it so that people would like understand everything because if i wanted people to understand it i was going to make it long and i really wanted this thing to be five minutes because of the fear of oh my god this is my first movie i don't want it to be too long that people will not watch i want it to be this i want it to be that i just want it to be short just to you know so like, even if it turns out bad i can just still delete it without feeling any remorse that it's such a long movie and such a long project and such long editing hours that i have put aside so i wanted it to just be short so i don't want to go into the details of everything but anyways when he sat down he took a stone i started drawing a car now that car with five wheels what i do so now the thing is that when he was drawing that car i came i looked at it then i bent down then i said can you speak up because i don't even know if you guys heard it but when i came down since he was like you know Murmuring and drawing, so I was just he was singing shot. Then I came and I said, Can you speak up? I don't even know that why that was the first thing I said, but I actually wanted that conversation to be awkward because you don't expect a conversation with a madman to go like a conversation with a normal person. So I wanted it to be awkward. G gets like I was really going for an awkward conversation. So I sometimes with can you speak up? Normally, it was a random person, they're like, Hi. How are you? But I don't want it to be how are you? Hi, how are you? Is you and is you okay? Like, I don't understand. Of course, I'm saying he's not fine, he's mad. <laughs> so, I just started, can you speak up? And he said, I'm not mad, I'm sad. No, 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 no. And he said, I need someone to talk to. Do you get? And I was like, you can talk to me because I mean, that was the only reasonable conversation to give after that. And then he looked up and I just like kind of, 
you know, I was kind of scared, you get. I just looked at him and I moved my eyes and he was like, I'm not mad, I'm sad. And I was confused. I'm not mad, I'm sad. I've, I've been seen as a mad person passing here. So which one is, you're not mad, you're sad. Um, and then he said, imagine this happiness rubbed off in one minute. Now this is the thing. He was drawing five cars. Now this is now me explaining what was in my mind because I feel like I'm explaining to help people that do not understand. So he was like, imagine this happiness rubbed off in five minutes. And um, now this is the thing. What was in my mind when I wrote that story then in 2019 was that this mad guy lost his family. In a, in a car accident, he was like the only survivor, and then it's kind of the accident kind of shot touch his brain because it was it shot touch, it did not affect him physically, but it affected him mentally. So, I mean, his father has you know money, the madman probably even lived in a good house, but just couldn't you know keep up with his mental health. Did you get so, um, he had a family. The family, the car had five wheels, but so maybe there are like four children or three children, two parents, whatever. I don't know why he was drawing five wheels, but there are probably five children or five people in the family. So um, he just said, imagine this happiness rubbed off in one minute, and he was looking at the floor, right? Yes. So he was looking at the car. So imagine this happiness rubbed off in one minute. So like they're on a car trip, going somewhere, and then they have an accident, and then everyone dies except him, and so he's like left to bear every single pain that comes with it for the rest of his life and um probably what was even in my mind was that he even caused the accident by doing something crazy but anyways i don't even want to go into that because it could be it could not be so um he said that imagine this happiness dropped off in one minute so one minute an accident has happened and everyone is gone and then he is like looking at all their bodies and it's like oh my god what's going on and um I mean, I've been in an accident before. I mean, no one died, thankfully, thank God. But the car was damaged so well. And yes, I know how it felt when I left that car. I was like, just so I could have just died. My auntie could have, like, anyone could have just gone. Ah, go for it. Anyways, so, um, he said, imagine this happiness dropped off in one minute. So now you guys understand why he's sad and not mad. He's mad because he's psycho, but. It's not really like mad, it's kind of sad more. And yes, you guys, and when he said that, I was not like um, confused. But I mean, there was no time. This is a madman, it's unpredictable. I don't know if you try to bite me next. So I just had to just say what I wanted to say. And I said, I think, I, I, I think you're handsome. I stuttered. And when I told him, I think you're handsome, he looked, he smelled, then he left. Because I mean, he was shy. What do you expect him to do? Say thank you. Or say you're beautiful too. Wouldn't that even be more awkward? <laughs> so he ran away and I was like looking at him. I don't even know if I should laugh at him running. There was a way my face was. I don't know if I should laugh that he was running, or I don't know if I should be sad. I don't know if I should call him back. I was just like, <laughs> like, what's going on here? So I that scene ended, and then the next day I'm like coming out, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking, I'm checking, it's not coming. I stood outside, I waited, I was with I was like, okay, if this man comes this time around, I'm going to ask him more questions and all of that. Now there was something else that happened. The last part of me ever writing on that diary, there was something that showed as if the ink of my pen had finished. And if you notice, that was the last time I said dear diary. So my pen ink finished and unfortunately that was the time he died so my bed ain't finished when he died yeah it's ambiguous it's awkward i know but yes that was what was in my mind so the and wait actually that was not what was in my mind when i was writing it in 2019 my pen ink actually finished and i was like you know what i'm going to inculcate this my pen ink has to finish i have to show that it finished but i was still trying to write but then it finished i mean as you can see as you could see the pen was even like cello taped so it was like not a good pen i don't know if you guys saw that detail so the pen ink finished that was when he died that was when a lot of things went wrong and then the next day i was just all out if you notice that last day i never wrote on any diary that was because my pen ink had finished i just came out and started waiting for him there was no voiceover in the, on that last day there was no voiceover because there was no diary there was no pen and I was waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, maybe if I had just carried the pen and continued writing, nothing would have happened to him. But no, my pen didn't finish and I didn't want to buy another pen. So I, um, you know, started 
I don't know, like coming out, waiting for him, and I did not see him. I mean, I was like tired, it was like six something. And if you notice, I tried to reduce the brightness of the video so that it would show that evening is reaching very well, like night in the room. You know, it would be weird if I had the same filter for day and the same filter for night. Actually, for those that are asking, this film, this film was shot by. This film was shot with an iPhone 13 Pro mask, cinematic mood, and I edited it using CapCut. I used a lot of filters, tried to make it cinematic, did some kind of color grading. So that was why it turned out, you know, kind of clear. Um, hopefully, if I ever get a camera, which I know I will, <laughs> I would make more better quality videos. So yes. Um, anyways, I kind of, um, you know. Waited, 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 and I now went back. And then those, I don't want to spoil it. So the girls downstairs said what they said, and I just stopped and I was like, So that was the end of the movie, and I wanted it to end there. Now, the thing is, I did not say he died. You get, I said something else. So for those of you that are, I'm not have spoiled it. Anyways, for those of you that are thinking he died, he might, he mightn't. I did not say he, what did they do? There's something I said. I did not say, the madman have died, yo. No, that was not what those ladies said. Whatever, not me. That was not what those girls said. They said something else. Not die. Do you get? So watch it again, and you know you might kind of ask for a part two. <laughs> and I'll let you guys know if I'm ever going to drop a part two. But right now I don't think so because I want it to just end that way. And I, I mean sometimes part two spoils something. It spoils the fun. So now. Nah, mm. Let's I come up with a better idea to continue it. But for now, nah. So um I mean this is like literally everything I wanted to talk about. There are lots of emotions I experienced when I was filming this and I already did it in my Q&A with Papito. It was a new experience for me. I was so happy. I don't even want to be an actor, actress. You get I feel like I find it weird acting. But I mean Yesterday, I was actually watching my old videos and I saw that I was actually acting pretty well. Maybe now that I'm used to like voiceovers on Instagram and comedy videos, I feel like I don't like acting. But well, maybe I might actually be in my own script because honestly, I wanted to find another lady that would do this scene. But at this point, I felt like I was the best girl to do it because I understood how I felt when I was writing. So I felt like I was the best person to express it. So every movie that I'm going to write, most likely I'm going to be in it. But honestly, I prefer the background work. I prefer the filming. I prefer the editing. Then my man was filmed by Ichi Voodoo. You can check him out on Instagram. He does. He's a videographer. You can hit him up. And yes, Papito, my you know, partner in the movie. It was so fun working with you if you are watching this. I really appreciate your effort. I really appreciate you pushing me to do this. I am so grateful. I am literally the happiest person knowing that I took this step. I really wanted to back down last minute, honestly. On that Sunday that we shot that video, I wanted to be like, you know what, you guys, let's leave this. But I was like, can I just do this? Just do it. Don't procrastinate. Don't say you are not sure. Just, <clears throat> just do it. So thank you so much, Papito, for encouraging me and god bless you amen so you guys um thank you so much for watching i feel like i'm happy now that i've clarified everything i don't think i'm leaving anything out if you have any other questions shall let me know but i love the fact that i have clarified this so you guys public service announcement i am going to be doing another film with papito very soon production starts next week i don't know if people are seeing this thing but production is starting ending of may and i am so happy this one will be beautiful i am so so happy like i am literally so happy for this one and that is because this first one has given me a push so i'm like more than just to do the second one and i'm so happy please my advice to everyone if you want to do something just do it now if i procrastinated this thing i wouldn't like be even thinking of more projects now so you guys i'm going to be dropping better things on youtube school is going to really choke me but i will try my best to do my best and thank you guys so much for your support it means a whole lot to me and yes um that's it bye Coordinator. we shall see bye bye Thank you all so much for your contribution to the sound producer of Dem Adman, Ruli Jutu, Ichie Fudu, to Papito, to the man that gave us the house, 
to what else was involved yeah that was basically it thank you guys so so much yes and to the girls that helped us that cooperated we did that shot like 30 times or more because the girls were just making mistakes but we are so so happy that you guys really helped if you're watching this thank you so much thank you thank you thank you thank you I know people might not reach the end, so that's why I say this for the end. So I'm going to let people watch it. If these people appreciate and watched it, come and tell me that you have watched it. Oh, this is how I know that you watched my video to the end. Because I know people watch it, but watching it to the end, I don't know. So bye bye. Call it. Yo, let's do this.